Okay, um, this is a very special podcast to me because in this podcast, I'm going to be talking about the reason why I wrote the five principles of organized complexity. Now, when I say I'm going to be talking about the reason, I don't mean the, the intimate details. No, that is not going to go on tape until the exact time is right. Now, but what I want to talk about is how uh, the principles of organized complexity, how they are the way in which God built reality. Now, when I talk about God, I talk about God not from a religious point of view because God is not a religious concept. God is the reality of physical existence, meaning that the world as it is built, as you are built, that is the way everything is built in reality, the single thread that runs through everything that connects them in a realistic, tangible way, that's God. Because the intimacy of God cannot be known. Meaning that you cannot know the reason why God exists. Because God doesn't exist per se. God gives existence. He creates existence. So existence as a concept, the fact that things exist in a space and a time, that's coming from God. All right? And if you have been conversant with the five principles of organized complexity, you see the reason for the emergence of space and time. Because recapping, in my book, I don't use the term God. I use the term primordial consciousness. And I say that the existence of this primordial consciousness is confirmed by the fact that there exists a K pattern. And a K pattern, the way I describe it in my book, right, the most basic form of it is the distribution of prime numbers. And that this distribution as a concept, as an infinite concept of exact relational order, that it doesn't exist except there is a primordial consciousness to give it existence. All right? This infinite K pattern, it cannot be even as a concept in concept space, so that the existence of concept space itself is proof that there is a consciousness that holds that concept as the evidence of its own existence or its own beingness, not existence per se. All right. Now, how God is without existence is not something that we can understand because that is to wrap our minds around the essence of God. And that is impossible. No created being can wrap its mind which is also a created thing around the creator. Okay? So existence flows from the creator. And as it flows from the creator, it manifests as a physical universe. It manifests as these sixes. And so you find the sixes patterning physical existence. There's no religion in any of this. Religion, you know, I've talked about that a lot, but it's a perspective on this thing I'm talking about. And it means, because it's a perspective, because it's an opinion, it means it can be wrong. But what I'm going to describe to you here cannot be wrong because it's not a perspective. It comes from looking at existence itself, the structure of reality as it comes out of God, as it flows from and then being able to trace it all the way back to God. Because the same signature that you find emanating from God, that's what you find in every naturally occurring complex system in the universe. This is my theory, right? It's my theory. I'm I'm the first person literally to bring out this understanding, even though I have not been given credit for it yet. But this is my theory. And I was the first person to assert that the prime numbers, the distribution of prime numbers, that that is how God implements organized complexity in existence. And that in order to be able to do this, he uses the positions of sixes and the multiples of sixes. So that what you really find in existence are the propagation of these sixes. And I said that as long as you know where these sixes are, then you can always simplify the system that you're looking at. And that allows nature to construct very complex systems. Systems that are so complex that, you know, it's hard to see how they go. But nature knows how they go because it knows where all the sixes are. And as long as it knows where all the sixes are, it knows where all the prime numbers are. And it uses that as a guiding conduit. And it builds this right into the very structure of all stratas of existence. From what you consider to be the physical universe to what you consider to be the living universe. So that you see the same signature across all aspects of creation, including living things, including the human, everything. If you see the same pattern of build in every, it's like looking at all Apple products and every time you look at it, you see a logo that is stamped with the Apple trademark or the Apple logo. I mean, you would immediately tell yourself that it is the corporation called Apple that built it, right? But that's the way it is. When you look at the human, when you look at other life forms, when you look at the unicellular organisms, if you look at plants, you look at everywhere you look at in existence, you look into the heart of matter, you see the same signature. Well, why does your intuition not then make the leap 
that you do when you look at the Apple logo. You know, you see the AirPods, you see the MacBooks, you see the iPhones, you see the iPads and all that. You know it's Apple that built it because you see the brand, right? Well, the brand that God used to build the universe is called organized complexity. It's the sixes and it's blackness. Now, because it is blackness, some people say, oh, what do you mean six is black? But that's the way it manifests in physical reality. Anytime you see sixes anywhere, they're always black. It doesn't matter. When carbon represents the sixes, it's black. If you decide to take it into the realm of graphene or graphite carbon, it's still black. Some people say, what about diamond? Well, you're not built of diamond. Diamond is like the most inert form of carbon. And what happens? You have to take the black stuff and put it under inconceivable pressure and temperature. And then it, all the covalent bonds literally just fall into each other and you get diamond. But life cannot use diamond. Why do you think you're attracted to it? Because it sparkles when you cut it and clean it and gleam it and then it catches the light and all that. It's still the same fascination with carbon. All right. So if you can think of sixes, places where sixes appear in nature and that they are not black, give me a call or send me a message. Don't hold your breath though. See? Now, that said, I also have theorized that one of the reasons for why you have racism and white supremacy is because of this concept. This thing associated with blackness, because blackness is not just the skin color of certain types of humans, right? That it's an actual physics on its own. Because it is the way that God built existence. It is the way that he maintains existence. So all the physical laws are built according to this blackness. So it is not a coincidence that humans, when they are under the sun, you know, the star, you know, the star that animates all life on earth, when they are under that star, it compels their biology to produce melanin, which is the name given to the black pigment. Our black Africans had a name for it because mela is Greek. It's Greek. The fact that we call it melanin today is because that terminology has been developed from the Greek mela. But the Africans always had a name for what it is that they, you know. And that word, or at least from the point, because Africa contains many civilizations, many types of people and all that, and they all each had a word for this, okay? But maybe the most famous is the word chem, which some racist anthropologists connived among themselves and said, no, this has to mean the color of the silt that the river carries and deposits on the land to make it fertile. That's not true. The word chem, that's where your chemistry comes from. If you try to go figure out where the word, the etymology of the word chemistry, they will tell you that, oh, wait, uh, chem came from the Greek word. No, listen, there was no Greek civilization. Literally, before the first Greek was even a, f a thought in the mind of anybody on earth, that ancient Nile Valley civilization was already thousands of years old. When I mean thousands, I mean ancient. The way we look at the Greeks today from their civilization, that's the way the Greeks were looking at the Africans. We're already very ancient in terms of this is very, very old. And the gap between them, in terms of the gap between, in terms of developmental gap, was enormous. Can you imagine thousands of years of development? But the black Africans did not go to invade Greece and enslave all the Greeks. You know, it's not just the thing that really intelligent, smart, sentient beings do. Okay? It's the reason why people are always looking up to the sky and making all these narratives, this imaginary narrative of aliens coming to come and destroy Earth. That's not what happens. That's not the way intelligence works. You see, the more intelligent you are, the more you're able to access higher levels of cognitive experience until you start approaching the level that love lives in. Because love is a very complex human emotion. It's at the highest level. That's why the animals don't really experience it in terms of, they, they don't have a sense of self. Because you need to get to a sense of self first before you now begin to understand. Because love involves the sense of self, but it also involves the connection of things together. The intuition that there is something much greater, much higher, it's a very profound feeling, but you cannot get there if you do not have the ability to get there. And it is the complexity in your brain that gives you the ability to do that. That is why human existence is very different from the existence of the animals. We are not expected to be like them, you know. So it's a, it's a travesty when you find humans who are adopting the kind of mentality that the animals live by. Some people calling themselves alpha wolves. Some people calling themselves sharks. What is this even supposed to mean? You're a human. You're not a beast of the field anymore. Meaning that there are certain things that are expected of you, of the way that you perceive reality. Because the aim of the human is to journey towards the creator, towards the maker. You came from the maker, 
But in the process of detaching from the maker, in the process of separating, right, you lost the understanding of who or what you are. The aim of the human is to go back. But now the human is not going to just go back with the same as it was before. You retain the possibility of joining a union with the maker. And this union has been described as some type of marriage of some kind, some type of high level orgasmic experience that really is categorized by constant growing ecstasy it's a joy of life now what i'm trying to do with this podcast is to begin to show you what that joy of life really contains because there is a special joy that comes into your reality by seeing understanding the reality of god as he pervades all of physical existence because you know that there is a unity amongst all things and that is the difference between ourselves and the animals because when you know that there's a unity amongst all things you can see the signature